Hey everyone, I am back with another unofficial solo automa. This time it's for Forest Shuffle. So Forest Shuffle doesn't actually come with any solo mode. I played this at my local game night uh, about a week ago and really enjoyed it. Uh, bought it right then and there and decided to create a solo mode for it. This is probably one of my more accessible solo modes as you don't have to print out a deck of cards. So with this, you only really have to print out three pieces of paper. I would highly recommend laminating them or putting them in some sort of pouch so that you don't have to print off a piece of paper every time you play. So <clears throat> what you get in this on the files on BGG is you get four difficulties. You will have three pieces of paper for each difficulty. You will have a piece of paper that shows the actions that they will take. You will have a piece of paper that will have its scoring for its up and down and left to right cards. And then you will also have a piece of paper for its all its different trees and a place for its cave to go. Now what I did was I printed mine double-sided and you can see here that each piece of paper has an icon. So you'll want, to, you'll want to match these up. So the ferns is easy mode and you can tell that by it being green and also the fern. And on the back, since I double-sided this, there's a butterfly uh, for normal. You have a bat for hard, and then you have the paw print for expert. So how do you know what difficulty to play on? It depends. Um, I'm not a very skilled gamer, so I'm going to play on, I'm gonna say normal for this um, playthrough I'm about to do. I'm probably gonna get beat. Um, if you, if you play this multiplayer and you've scored between 100 and 200, I would play on easy. If you're between 2 to 300, I would play on normal. Uh, 3 to 350 to 375, I'd play on hard. And past 375, I would play on um, expert. Now, this game has a variable ending. You never know when it's going to end. So those... Those score ranges or are for about, if you've played 30 cards and you're able to score one to 200, then I would play on easy. Um, that's how I, I, I did this. The Automa will scale with you because it won't score as many points. So that nature of the game that, it, when when is winter gonna come? That is fully intact for this solo Automa. So to set up, you're gonna take your three sheets for the difficulty you're playing on. In this case, let me switch this to normal real quick. And I like to put them in a line because that's going to help me know how many cards the Automa has. So I have my action sheet here. I have uh, the up and down and left and right scoring here. And then I have the trees as well as the cave scoring here. You can see that they all show a butterfly on them, so we're good to go. You're gonna take eight reference cards that come with the game already, okay? And they were numbered, and so you're gonna take reference cards one through eight. And I sleeve these because you actually go through this a number of times. You're gonna give that a shuffle, and you're just gonna place it to the left over here. The setup. For the rest of the game is the same you're going to create your deck the same as in a two-player game over your here you're going to see where i discarded 30 cards you're supposed to do this without seeing them i usually just turn them face up and put them in like in the discard pile because i have not seen any effects that allow you to go through the discard pile um and i don't feel like putting them back in the box because i like to set it up again real quick and play it so when drawing for the starting hands, you will draw yours as normal. One, two, three, four, five, six. That came from the top of the deck. And then for the Automa, you're gonna flip over one at a time, filling in. So in this case, I would go one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
And what I like to do is like I like to keep three to each piece of paper. Kind of like there's three to each section up here because then you know when there's a tenth card. The Automa, just like you, can have at most ten cards. So it's a good visual reminder for me that when a card gets placed here, that's ten and they can't get any more. And after doing those steps, you are now ready to begin the game. The game is going to look very similar to a multiplayer game. You're going to take a turn, the Automa's going to take a turn. And you'll either draw cards or you'll either play cards. The Automa do, will, will do the exact same thing. Uh, you will be the first player, so you will go first. You will play your cards. You can mulligan if you want to, to start the game. The Automa will never mulligan. And when it's the Automa's turn, all you will do is flip the top card from the Automa card deck. So let's go ahead and flip it. In this case, it's number eight. You will ignore everything else on the card because it's just a reference. And so you'll look at number eight and then you'll try to take the, t the action in this top box. If the Automa cannot take it, then it will move to this bottom box. There's only one out of these cards that has three, and that's number five. If it can't take this first action, it will go to the second action. And if it can't do that, it will go to the third action. So let's go through each one real quick. So number one says it will draw two cards from the deck if it doesn't have nine. So I've moved this over just to center it more on the table. This would normally be over here. So right now the Automa has six. So if it were to draw number one right now, it would simply take the top two cards and place them in its area. If it had nine to begin the action, and then it said draw two cards, it would not draw the two cards and it would go to the next action. In this case, it says play the leftmost card. That's, it will always play the leftmost card in its uh, Automa line. And so whenever you add cards to the line, you always add them to the right. So it says play the leftmost card. And if there's a choice on it, being either an up-down card or a left-right, if it's an up-down card, it would choose the southernmost animal to play. And if it was a left-right card, it would choose the easternmost animal to play, so the right. So in this case, it says play a card. If it's able, it's going to prefer either south or east. So looking at its line... The farthest left card is a tree. So that south and east thing doesn't matter because it doesn't have options. So the tree says it costs two. So all it's going to do is to take its next two cards, one, and put them into the clearing. And just like you, since it is a tree, it's going to flip over the top card of the deck and put it out. Then you're going to look at the symbol of the card. This tree is an oak. And all you're going to do is find the matching symbol on its tree board and mark off the leftmost box for that oak. So right now, at the end of the game, it's going to score 15 points for its oaks. Let's say that the line looked like this, and you pulled that number one card, and it says play, play the leftmost card, and it needs to be south or east, and this was the card in spot. So south or east, it's going to play the east, so what's on the right. So it cost one, and you're, it's going to mark off the paw print. So one would take the next card, place it in the clearing, and you're going to find the section that corresponds with the card. This was a left-right card, so I'm going to look at this section down here where it's left and right. And this was a paw print animal, so I'm simply going to mark off the leftmost box that has not been marked off with a paw print. After that, you can simply discard the card and then you're gonna move its line left. So I'll move all these cards left and that's what an Automa turn would look like. Let's say it pulled number two and it says draw two cards from the clearing. It wants to look at deer first. So if there's any deer out there, it's going to pull them first for one of the two cards and then if there's no deer or you've already gathered all the deer um, that's out there, it's going to go with the leftmost. So once and again, let's look at an example. Currently, it has seven cards in its line, so it can draw two cards and still put it at ten or less. So it's going to look at the clearing, and it wants, any, it wants to draw two cards. It wants any deer first. 
Well, here's the deer right here. So it's going to pick that first. And then it says leftmost, since there's no more deer left, it's going to pick the leftmost card, put it in its row, and then slide all these cards to the left. All right, looking at the next one, card three, it's the same thing, but it's gonna look, it's gonna pull cards from the right. So let's, let's say this is what it looked like. It only has seven cards in its row. So it's going to look to pull from the clearing. There's a deer out here. We'll pull that one first, slide these down. And then it says pull from the right. So we'll pull the rightmost card and put it in its line. All right, looking at the next one, it says it wants to play the leftmost card in its row. And it wants the north or east. So looking at its row, pull this card. It is an up or down, so we'll, we'll play the north, the topmost card. It's a bird, so it's going to cost two. So we'll discard these two from its row. We will slide all of these ones down. We will add this card to the, the, the discard pile, and we will go ahead and mark a bird for the Automa. So put that here, and then we'll go ahead and mark a bird. Now this card said, if it played a bird, it goes again. So you would draw another Automa card and you would do another action for it. There are a couple of instances where it will take an extra turn. If it, for instance, card number two, if it's unable to draw two cards because it has nine or 10 cards, instead of doing this, it will take this action. Additionally, if it has eight or less cards and it goes to draw two and there's only one or maybe there's none, no cards in the clearing, instead of drawing them from the clearing, they, it will draw it from the top of the deck. So play a card, play a card. If it's a bird, it gets to go again. Play a card, draw two from the, tech, from the deck. And then this one says, draw two from the deck. Once again, this is always if it has eight or less cards. If it has nine or 10, it won't draw and it will do the next action. Draw two from the deck. If one of those shows the paw print, go ahead and shuffle the Automa discard pile back into its deck. So let's say we drew a five. We drew a five, we drew two cards, one for the Automa, two. One of those animals does have the paw print. Then after adding those to its row, it will take the discards and it will add them back to its Automa deck, give it a shuffle, and you're good to go for the next turn. Six and seven are kind of like the birds. It's gonna play a card. If it matches one of these two tree symbols, it will go again. And those are all the actions that it will take. <laughs> Except for this one, it says add clearing to the cave. So if you pull, if it pulls deck uh, card number five and it has nine or 10 cards and can't draw two cards, it will then move to this one. And if there's any cards in the clearing, it will simply collect them and add them under its cave card. At the end of the game, it will score one point for each card there, just like you would in a multiplayer game. If there are no cards in the clearing, then it would just simply try to play the leftmost card in its row. The only other thing to note is that some cards have multiple tags. Um, so like the butterfly, the butterflies will only ever mark off a box on the Automa sheet for the butterfly. It will not mark off a box for the insects. Additionally, the deer have the hooves as well as the deer icon. It will never mark off the box for the hooves. There are other animals that will do that. It will only mark off the box for the deer. Each card will only mark off one box for the Automa. Um, and so like these tree symbols up at the top, you completely ignore those for animals. You would only look to, to that when you pull a tree card and you need the icon associated with it. So each card can only mark off one box for the Automa. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you play against the Automa at the end of the game. You're gonna take your score sheet out and just like you, it's gonna score for its trees. It's gonna score for its up and down card. It's gonna score for its left and right cards. And then finally, if it had any cards under the cave, it would score. How do you know what it scores? You just look at its sheet and whichever is the rightmost or the leftmost uncovered um, spot 
number is the amount it scores. So if it only got one sycamore during the game, then it would score 10 points. If it got two of this type of tree, it would score 20 points, so on and so forth. Um, this works the same way for these, this uh, piece of paper as well. If you ever need to see, for instance, this spot, great spotted woodpecker, it says, if no other forest has more trees, well, how do you know how many trees they have? Well, it's very simple. Just take a look at their sheet and just see how many marks they have. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have ten, ten trees. I know the linden scores one point each, but three points if there's no other forest with more lindens. So once again, you can come here if you have that card and say, okay, the Automa scored one yellow or linden tree. I have two, so I have more than them. So this is a handy dandy way to see how many uh, trees they have or if there's other ones that look for types of animals, the number of them, you can simply reference this and see how many they have. And that's how you play against the Automa. So in summary, you're gonna take your turn as normal when it's the Automa's turn. Just flip over a card from its deck, look at the number, Take the top action if it's able to. Whenever it's looking to draw cards, it will only draw cards if it has eight cards or less. If it can't do the top action, then do the bottom action. For instance, if it wanted to play a card, its leftmost card, and it says play this card, it has a cost of two. There are no more cards. Pretend these aren't there. There are no more cards in its row. It's simply going to ignore the play the card effect because it can't pay for the card and it would take the bottom effect, which would likely be to draw cards. So take the actions. If you can't take the action, take the bottom action, pay for the cards if needed to. If you add a tree to the clearing, just like you would in a multiplayer game, it would take the top card of the deck and flip it over, um, and then mark off the box on the furthest left column for that row. And at the end of the game, once the third winter card comes out, just check to see which which box is the furthest left uncovered, and that's what the Automa scores. I will be doing a full playthrough so you can see this in action. Um, so feel free to check that out, and if you have any questions, please let me know.